everybody. It's Pete Carmasino here at Chicken Analytics. Thanks for tuning into this week's halftime show here on Stock Charts TV. Each and every week, we go over our power gauge, how it interacts with the ACP platform. It's a plugin, so simple to get. It's a, just an extra, uh, almost an extra month of payment for you if you wanted to add, add the power gauge. And what it does, it delivers fundamental ratings on most U.S. stocks. Now, we don't rate every U.S. stock. Some of them need at least a year. So if they're new IPOs, things like that, um, you're not going to get a rating on them. But it's your your names that have been trading for years and years and years. Um, and even ones that have just started in the last year and a half or so, you're going to get a rating. But most importantly, you're also going to get a technical rating, not only from uh, ACP platform, but I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what it looks like on on the uh, Chaken platform as well. So if you have ACP and you've got StarCharts.com, obviously that's why you're here. You can add the plugin, get started with that, learn what the rating means, and then take it to the next level if you so choose. So we'll look at a few names today. What I'm going to do is uh, what I did last week was I did uh, a 50 day crossing uh, over the 200 on the upside. Today, I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to do the bearish indication of 50 crossing below the 200. And we got plenty of those. The markets are down and uh, you know there's going to be plenty of opportunities there. And we're going to look at some specific ones, but I'll run the predefined scan on ACP and we'll look at a couple names there. Then I'm going to show you a list of names that we ran on our own uh, proprietary screener inside Chaken. And then we'll look at those names as well. Let's take a look at the charts. All right, everybody, we're here at the Chaken platform, and this is basically, you know, what our platform looks like and how we build and show you guys the ratings. These are all ETFs now. On the ACP platform, we don't get the ETF ratings. It's just the stock ratings only. Um, but we are getting some feedback and, you know, potentially thinking about adding those. But, um, you know, send your feedback if that's something you're interested in, and we can we can certainly see if we can, we can make it happen. But right now, we're sticking to stocks. And so what I said I was going to do is looking at a predefined scan here on the ACP platform. Uh, bearish uh, 50 day over the 200. Um, sorry, you know, crossing down below the 200. And, you know, what we're doing there is is obviously looking for names and downtrends, right? I mean, we're going to find plenty of those uh, this week. So, you know, what I'll do is we'll kind of click through a few of these. Now, I'm not getting a lot. I got a few ETFs in here. I got some, uh, maybe some smaller pink sheet names here. So I'm not really interested in those at all, really. But I'll look at um, Cirrus Logic. Now, this is a semiconductor name. The semiconductors in general have had some issues here. Um, if you look at the, I'm going to do a quick uh, on the fly move here with a ratio chart, show you how simple that is. Um, this is SMH over SPY, SPY. And we've been calling this out for our users that this has been breaking down now for weeks, obviously. So, what this shows you is the semiconductor index is breaking down below the SPY. So what that means is it's actually underperforming. Now the SPY is down, this S&P 500 is already down. I mean, that index today is down one and a quarter percent. And so if you see the ratio down, meaning again, SMH is the leading symbol in this ratio, that means this is the SMH is in a worse downtrend than the SPY, okay? Any ratio chart, that's how you read it. So look, we're getting on, on I would, I would call support here this level for the ratio chart. If you just pull up SMH, that's just the ETF of the semiconductors, Van X uh, version of it. And you can see what, I mean, it's just terrible. It's been been a very choppy move here. It's been moving around here and it typically had a nice long-term, you know, upward trend for many, many years. And it probably will continue. We're just This is a speed bump, let's hope, but it is a breakdown and you gotta be cognizant of that. So when I pull up names like Cirrus Logic, it's in that group. I already know that the, the group is negative and not doing well. And if I go to Cirrus here, C-R-U-S, okay, um, I'm going to show you our rating. You can see the rating here. There's the plugin. I'm going to show you guys how to get there. You go to the little chicken logo there. Um, but you have to buy the plugin first, obviously. To buy it, you have to go down here to the plugins page, search for it, click on uh, our icon, and then obviously purchase it. But um, it's a neutral plus. Now look at the technicals. It's the worst out of all of them. All right. So what's this rating telling you? It's telling you that it is a bullish name that is underperforming. All right. And when you go to our charts, it might be just a little easier because we have all of the indicators here kind of pre-built and the relative strength has broke down. So I always call this out. If you've been watching my videos for some time, you know, relative strength is very important to me. And obviously if I pulled up a chart and I looked at Cirrus versus the S&P or SPY, we can do that really quick on ACP. Just give you a quick idea. 
right? Obviously, it looks, uh, obviously, it's under massive pressure here, and it's been under massive pressure. So if I go back to Cirrus, I can see where we had negative relative strength. We had a little pause in it. It was basically moving higher. But now another new breakdown. Truthfully, it's been in a range. And so really, this bottom part of the range is being threatened. And um, at this particular point, it does look like the trend can continue. Now, it's definitely oversold. And you've got names like this in the group. But it's a, it's a weak stock in a weak industry. So the trend is down. And you have to be cognizant of that. You have to follow that particular trend. Don't try to catch a falling knife until you start to see the entire group make changes. So if SMH starts to bottom out as a, as a basket, as a group, um, you, you know you have a catalyst maybe for the group. But if, you, if you're seeing individual names with their own specific catalyst, that could be a different story. But you can't just judge everything by, you know, one uh, brush, you know, a uh, broad brush stroke. That's hard to say. And, you know, you, you've got to kind of look into it. But overall, this one is looking at the entire basket and telling you that the group in and of itself is weak. Okay. So that's why you're seeing that name here. Let's look at Interpublic Group, which is more of a media, um, you know, advertising type uh, agency. And I'm going to go to IPG. I see another name that's neutral plus, right? So what are we saying here? Fundamentally, it's strong. If I look at the rating real quick, I have weak technicals. We could see that matches what we have here. Okay. Experts are negative. Technicals are neutral and probably getting worse. But from a fundamental value standpoint, it's not that bad. But we're seeing a breakdown in trends. So again, it doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks. What matters is what the market is doing with the stock right now. And right now, it is in a downward trend. We're starting to begin one because look, you're seeing a series of, I would call these, if you really squint, you can see some lower highs and lower lows. Now, if this one if this low holds, it might be the end of something or the beginning of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a support area. But you can't really look at that until the overall market starts to change. And so when the market's negative, you're seeing negative relative strength here. If you've got a down market and a stock that's doing worse than the market, you have to use that to your advantage, either to avoid it or protect yourself, whatever the case may be. We know transports have been under pressure. And this chart is um, pretty evident here now. This is an ETF. All right, we don't rate it, but in general, you can go and get the components of this ETF, um, you know, through many sources. But I'll do it here because it's quicker and easier uh, for me to do it right here. Now, if I pull up IYT and I hit this little icon, it's a list icon. It's going to pull in all the names. So right now, I only have four names that are bullish inside of this ETF: ten that are negative and a lot kind of living in the middle. But if you're a Dow Transport Theory or Dow, Dow theory person, you know that when this starts to break down, the overall economy is obviously having some struggles here. Now, people are calling about railroads and things like that that look potentially like they're oversold. Uh, we do think they are oversold, but the problem is, is that the relative strength is breaking down along with it being oversold. So when you find names are oversold, but good relative strength, right? you might take an advantage, take that into your advantage that the market is taking a breather and, and there may be further upside, but here we're not really seeing that. Um, and then that was really it from the stock standpoint here. And none of the, all these other ones are kind of like, uh, you know, smaller names. So let me look at the list that I found. So I'm just pulling this up. I took a snapshot and I thought it would just be easier to show the list here. And we'll look at a couple. I'm trying to find some big names that we all know. And obviously a Hilton grand vacation, uh, Beacon Roofing in the Builder and Supply. You're seeing Union Pacific, the railroads, Wyndham Hotels, Hyatt. You see a theme here, Airbnb. You're seeing these travel names start to potentially take a breather. So let's look at HGV and let's try to look at um, the other one, Hyatt, H, and WH. Let's look at those three. So let's look at HGV real quick. I'm running out of time. So again, relative strength is newly breaking down. It is oversold and it's been choppy for, for sure. Look at the range from this level, 55, down to this level, 44. It's been in a 10 to 11 point range here. And, you know, I think what's happening, obviously, we're, it's, it's starting and stopping, right? 
the minute we started to get a reopening, we had a, a sort of a resurgence in like the um, Omicron variant. And then that kind of went away. And now prices are so high and people are so abundantly shopping and, and, and trying to travel and booking hotels. You can't find anything. It's literally out of control from a pricing standpoint. So when inflation starts to peak, it's, uh, you know, out, you know, peak out of, uh, you know, from the, from the depths of wherever it's been living, it starts to show inside of demand destruction. And that's what I think people are kind of looking at from a, ho from the hotel standpoint. If I just pull up Hilton, the actual hotel, you know, this is a name that we've been tracking and liking, but it is starting to break down as well. Right. So you got to be careful. Let's look at Airbnb. You know, this one's always been a tough one. Um, but it's such an interesting and great concept. And a lot of people have had great success with it. And we're newly rating the stock just for the last few months here, but it's clearly in a downtrend, weak stock and weak trend and breaking down again, but oversold. Okay. So you got to take that into consideration. It is oversold. So let's look at the other names, Wyndham hotels, which is WH. Another hotel got a bearish rating on it again. And so we're seeing these things kind of break down, right? And you're seeing this across the board. These charts look very similar, right? Because they're being traded as a group. And the other one I wanted to look at real quick was, oh, Hyatt, just symbol H. Actually, I pulled up Hyatt. I'm going to pull up Hilton now, HLT. And I'm going to see a very similar chart. So you're seeing the group, okay, act behave, look very similar to all the other names in the group, a lot like semiconductors, a lot like semiconductors. We'll look at one name in the semiconductor industry real quick. And then I got to tur turn it off here. Look at uh, NVIDIA. Now this stock has had such a, an, an incredible five-year journey um, and really multiple years of, a, of amazing journey. I mean, the stock was a $40 stock after all the splits and all that stuff. And it went up to roughly 300 and some odd dollars a share. Today, you're just seeing this stock have trouble. Lower highs, potentially lower lows, not yet. It's right here, that 210, $200 level is definitely going to be support. And if it's broken, you could probably see some lower areas. Potentially, could it be maybe 150, 160, you might see that. I, I mean, that's pretty far-fetched, but um, these moves can happen rapidly. So. I would just be very, very careful in, you know, in this particular group and just kind of wait for better signals. That's all. You're not, you don't have to jump in and, and, and try to be a hero. Just wait for better signals. I say this all the time. If the clock, the top of the market was 12 o'clock and the bottom of the market was six o'clock, if you could sell at one o'clock and buy at seven or eight, you'd be an amazing investor and trader. So keep that in mind. All right, everybody, that's all the time we have. I'm sorry. I probably ran over time but I didn't really get to everything I wanted to look at. But thanks again for tuning in and uh, we'll be here next week, same time. Take care, thanks again. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.